top of a hill with a staff above your head isn't exactly what I would say is a good battle strategy. But that's exactly what Moses did in the passage that we're looking at today. So this comes from Exodus 17 verses 8 to 16. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered, and Moses, Aaron and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses' hands were held up, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side, one on the other, so his hands remained steady until sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, write this on a scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it because I will completely blot out the name of Amalek from under heaven. Moses built an altar and he called it the Lord is my banner. He said because hands were lifted up against the throne of the Lord the Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. I have to admit that I struggle to accept help, let alone ask for it. In our culture, it is sometimes seen as a weakness to accept or ask for help. Sometimes we see ourselves as failures if we don't do things um, without help. Or sometimes we see ourselves as a burden. But in this passage, Moses' actions during the battle Um, not only help the Israelites, but also display two really good ways to acknowledge our limitations. So number one is to cling to the one who knows your future. When Moses' arms were lifted up, the Israelites were winning. As soon as the staff started to lower, the Israelites started to lose. By lifting up his staff, Moses symbolically acknowledged that God was always in control and God was always with them. So like Moses, when you feel that you're in a time of uncertainty, you feel ill-equipped and underqualified. Just remember to look at the situation in front of you, but don't let that stop you from clinging on to God's authority and fervently pursuing God's promise to you. Number two is to allow trusted people to help and journey with you. When the battle was raging, Moses' arms became very weary and he could no longer hold them up. He needed his trusted friends to come and help him so that he could then, in turn, help the Israelite army win the battle. So in a way, Aaron and Hur actually helped achieve the victory. We were never created to go through hard times on our own. When my husband and I were going through our infertility journey, we kept it a secret for a very long time. And the weight of the struggle really impacted us in a massive way. It wasn't until we opened up to trusted people that the weight began to lift. And when we received prayer, we were given hope and we were given God's promise that we would one day conceive a child. What if, just like us, Your current limitation is an invitation for people to partner with you in a God-glorifying story that he wants to tell through you. The victories that we see that come out of uncertain times are very rarely done in our own strength. They are a result of us clinging to God and finding supportive people to pray and journey with us. It is the faithfulness of God that brings us through the other side of our really tumultuous storms. And when we acknowledge that, we leave space for God to do amazing things in our lives. So let's pray together. Father God, help me to remember when I am going through the storm, that you are always with me 
and that I should cling to you. Help me to ask for help and help me to find the right people. Trusted people that will help me glorify you. Use my situation to encourage others, Lord. And thank you for your unending promises. Amen. Thank you.